You're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, coming from our outstanding studios provided by First Star Logistics, and we are super appreciative of that and all that they do for us. Keys to beating the Tennessee Titans. That's what this is all about. Well, I know one thing. The big boy pads you had when you went to Pittsburgh, the double chin strap you had on the helmet when you went to Pittsburgh, don't put them away. You better have them when you go to Tennessee because Mike Vrabel is a big believer in physicality and the Tennessee Titans are going to hit you and they're going to hit you a lot. So make sure that you have your big boy pads on and that helmet buckled on tight because it's going to be that type of a Donnybrook. It will be a slobber knocker extraordinaire. In fact, I think it works out pretty well. The Pittsburgh Steeler game, going to Pittsburgh, playing the Steelers with the crowd noise with the bad weather, with the bad field conditions, a lot of things to deal with, a great dress rehearsal for going to Tennessee. The weather might not be anywhere near as bad. The field might be in better shape, but the fans are going to be equally rabid. And they're going to want a piece of the Cincinnati Bengals because the Bengals knocked the Tennessee Titans off in the playoffs last year. Mike Vrabel is going to want a piece of the Cincinnati Bengals. The Tennessee Titans are. The fan base is. It's going to be a very, very hostile environment. There's no two ways about that. So going to have to deal with that crowd noise, um, make sure they handle things just like they did in Pittsburgh and, and be physical like that. It's going to be a, a huge factor in the football game. Because Tennessee is going to try to run the football. No two ways about that. You have Derrick Henry. Why wouldn't you? It's like a big defensive end that they give the football to, size-wise, coming downhill at you. He's got 1,010 rushing yards in 10 football games, averaging over 100 a game, leads the National Football League. He's run the ball 230 times, leads the National Football League. He's got 1,209 scrimmage yards, including catches out of the backfield, leads the National Football League. He's got 10 rushing touchdowns, third most in the National Football League. This guy is the real deal. Uh, there are no, no two ways about it. You're going to have to deal with him. Make sure you control that running game. Can't let him get ahead of steam. You're going to have to make him make his first cut in his own backfield or worst case scenario at the line of scrimmage. If you let him get to the second or third level without slowing him down, it could be a long day defending the Tennessee Titans. Have to make him go sideways, east and west. Make him run laterally. Once he squares those shoulder pads up and then lowers them, and he's going north and south, he's a load. There are no, there's no two ways about that. So those are all very, very important uh, dynamics. And then get a lot of bodies around him. Gang tackle him. Don't put a linebacker out there or a safety out there one-on-one -on -one to take down Derrick Henry. A lot of people have to run to the football. First of all, you have to play your gap control responsibility. Don't give up a crease. Don't give up a lane. Make him hesitant and then run run people, a bunch of people at him and get him on the ground. It's going to be a ground and pound day is what the Tennessee Titans want to do. It's what Mike Vrabel wants to do. He wants to play keep away. He wants to control the clock. He wants to go on long, extended, sustained drives. They are one of six teams in the National Football League that has run the ball more than they've thrown it. That's uh, it's pretty pretty impressive. They're number three in that category and third most in the National Football League. Um, they're also averaging 46.7 yards per game more rushing the football than the opponent, almost a half a football field more than the opposition. So it just tells you how they want to play football. They're old school. They want to run it and let Tannehill play action pass off of it and all those sorts of things. Ryan Tannehill last year in the playoff game threw three interceptions and the Titans lost the football game. Ryan Tannehill had to go to a sports psychologist and get some help. Ryan Tannehill was struggling with mental health in terms of letting his football team down. And he couldn't get over it. So um, he wants restitution. His teammates want restitution. Nashville wants restitution. Got to be ready to play and play hard and play with intense physicality in Nashville on Sunday.
The other thing you have to do is stay on schedule, stay ahead of the chains. The Tennessee Titans get that running game going, and they're facing a lot of second and third and short situations, and they want to do the reverse to you defensively. They want to get you in third and longs and get off the football field. Defensively, they've only allowed 82.2 yards per game rushing. Best in the National Football League. They don't get enough recognition for that. All people think about is Derrick Henry running the football. Well, they stopped the run as well. They're, they're a good football team in that regard. They uh, give up less than four yards a carry. Third best in the NFL at 3.9 yards per carry. They've only given up two rushing touchdowns on the season. Fewest in the National Football League. They've rushed for 11. That plus nine differential is best in the National Football League. They hammer you and they'll run the ball into the end zone. They don't let you run it, and they don't let you run the ball in the end zone. It's that simple. The Tennessee Titans on first and goal situations have not been stopped this year in the National Football League season. So, I mean, that that it's, it's all about that. There are no question about it. And then you better stay on schedule against the Titans because on third down defensively, they're number one in the NFL, 30.1% for third down conversion percentage, best in the National Football League. Bengals offensively, they're at 48.4%, third best in the NFL. The best way to handle it, though, is don't get to third down. Because it's a critical stage of a of, uh, couple of times during the football game last week against Pittsburgh. They go on long, extended drives in the second quarter. They go on a 10-play, 92-yard drive. They only face third down one time, a third and four. It's 24-yard completion to T. Higgins. Another drive uh, that the Bengals went on in the fourth quarter. They go on an eight-play, 93-yard drive. They are backed up inside their own 10-yard line twice at the eight and seven-yard line, and they go on an eight-play, 93-yard touchdown drive. Never face third down. They don't get into third down one time. So on combine those two drives, 18 plays, 185 yards, 14 points. Over 10 yards per play on two drives, backed up. 14 points, scored touchdowns twice. They only faced third down one time in those two drives. Best way to handle third down? Don't get to third down. <laughs> don't let the Tennessee Titans get in special pressure packages and do the things that they're going to do, disguise coverages in the back end or whatever the case may be. Handle things on first and second down. Stay on schedule. I think it's going to be another big deal in the football game. How about red zone? How about finishing drives? Two best teams in the National Football League offensively going at it head to head. Bengals are number one in the NFL right now in red zone efficiency. 75% of the time they score a touchdown when they get in the red zone. Three out of every four. That is significant. In the last two football games, they're 100% in the red zone. They haven't been stopped in the red zone and having to settle for a field goal. They've been scoring seven with regu regularity, not settling for three. Tennessee Titans are the same type of dynamic. And when they get in that low red zone, first and goal situations, they score. They have not been stopped. But they're, uh, they're right there with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, their red zone percentage is 74.1%. They're nip and tuck. I mean, these football teams, basically, three out of every four possessions, when they get in the red zone, they punch it in for touchdowns. Which defense is going to step up? Which defense is going to make some red zone plays? Uh, the Tennessee Titans are 10th in the NFL in red zone defense uh, in terms of percentage of touchdowns allowed, and the Bengals are tied for 15th. So they're both allowing uh, a little over 50%. Tennessee, 53.6. The Bengals, 54.8. Very similar in terms of percentages. Offense and defensive red zone execution. Which football team will have a better performance in that scoring zone. That could be big in this football game as well. There's no two ways about it. Let's talk about the all-important kicking game, the actual kicking of the football in terms of special teams. Field position is going to be a big, big deal in this game. You want to put uh, Tennessee on as many long fields as you possibly can and put yourself on as many short fields as you possibly can. That's always a staple to success in any football game. And how about the uh, NFL debut of Drew Chrisman? Pretty darn strong. The first two punts of his NFL career. First one, the return guy bobbles. Almost a safety in the end zone. He returns it out to the five-yard line. So pins him on a long field. 
His second punt pins him back at the nine yard line. First two punts of his career, not just inside the 20, inside the 10. And putting the Pittsburgh Steelers on long fields, they didn't score. The Bengals, like I talked about earlier, went on two long fields, starting inside the 10 yard line twice on their end. And they go the distance, 92 and 93 yard touchdown drives. And the Pittsburgh Steelers were not able to do that like the Cincinnati Bengals did. So Drew Crisman was a big factor in establishing field position positively for the Bengals defense and really giving them a big assist. Ryan Stonehouse, the punter for the Tennessee Titans, leads the National Football League. 53 yards per punt, best in the league. 44.8 yard net, fourth best in the league. 21 punts inside the 20 yard line, best in the league. This guy has been establishing favorable field position for the Tennessee Titans all season long. Drew Crispin is going to have to compete. And if he punts like he did against Pittsburgh, his numbers are very favorable. He averaged 50 yards. Now, again, it's one game. Ryan uh, Stonehouse's numbers are over 10 games. He's got a much bigger sample size. His net is 44.7, which is one-tenth of a yard different than uh, what Stonehouse has done in 10 games. And he's already got two punts inside the 20, really inside the 10. So Stonehouse and Chrisman, which punter is going to put his team, uh, put the opposition on long fields to help his defensive football team? That's a, a big part of special teams. And, of course, the return game is going to be a factor. Um, and and uh, Bengals are going to have to win that battle as well in terms of punt returns, kickoff returns. Travion Williams had himself a day. He had a 42-yard kickoff return. He returned five kickoffs for 124 yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Very, very important. Average just under 25 yards per return. He also was the leading tackler on special teams, covering punts and kickoffs. Travion Williams made a statement. Evans was down. Travion Williams said, I'm going to expand my role, just like Samaj P. Ryan did, just like Trenton did as a receiver, catching his first touchdown pass. Trenton Irwin gets it done, catching his first NFL touchdown pass. Who's going to step up? Who's going to step up for Darren Simmons? Who's going to step up in terms of special teams? Who's going to kick the football better? Money Mack. It's from 54 yards on that field in those weather conditions. Drew Christman, perfect holds too. Handled the holding aspect of it. Big deal. Nice debut. Drew Christman. Drew Christman and Money Mac. Will they outperform Ryan Stanhouse and Randy Bullock? I don't know about you, but I'm taking Money Mac over Randy Bullock. That dog shit hunt. The Tennessee Titans have won seven out of their last eight football games. They lost their opener by a point to the Giants. They got blown out by Buffalo, 41-7. to They got blown out by 34 points. They have won seven out of their last eight football games. Seven out of their last eight. Their only loss, an overtime loss, 20-17 to to the Kansas City Chiefs. They're playing at a very, very high level and they're used to playing in close football games. They lost their opener by a point. Uh, they, like I said, got blown out in week two. They beat Las Vegas by two. They beat the Colts by seven. They beat uh, Washington by four. They beat um, Indianapolis again by nine. They beat Houston by seven. They lose in overtime to Kansas City by three. They beat Denver by seven. Their biggest point differential in terms of a victory, is they beat the Green Bay Packers by 10. They play in a bunch of close football games. They're 7-2 and two in games that are decided by a score or less. They're used to playing in close football games. The Bengals, the Bengals situation here, they got outscored by 3 against Pittsburgh, by 3 against Dallas. So both teams started out 0-2. Bengals beat the Jets by 15, beat Miami by 12, lose at Baltimore by 2, and uh, beat New Orleans by 4 beat Atlanta by 18, lose at Cleveland by 19, beat Carolina by 21, and then uh, beat Pittsburgh by seven. So they're, they've had big differentials in terms of losing the football game at Cleveland, and four of their five wins are by 12 points or more. They haven't had as much experience in low-scoring games, and they haven't had the kind of success in low-scoring games that the Tennessee Titans uh, have had. That is Tennessee's brand of football. 
This football team is seven and three, and they're only averaging 19.3 points per game. Key is they're giving up only 18 and a half, but they've outscored the op- opposition by a mere eight points. And it's because of that blowout to Buffalo, that 34 point blowout. Every other game has been very, very close other than the 10 point win against Green Bay. So they know how to play in close football games. The Bengals are going to have to finish a close football game and uh, and be able to, to handle that aspect of it against Tennessee Titans because the Titans have been there, done that, and they're at home. They got the home crowd. They got other things that the Bengals are going to have to deal with. Here's two teams that have been north and south pole in terms of fast start, strong finish. Fast start. Man, in the first half, the Cincinnati Bengals have outscored the opponent by a total of four points. Plus nine in the first quarter, minus five in the second quarter. Tennessee, on the other hand, has outscored the opponent by 62 points in the first quarter. They've outscored them by 30 in the first quarter, 32 in the second quarter. Cannot let Tennessee do that. Cannot let Tennessee get an early lead and build on that lead and take the air out of the football and make you throw it every down because they're not giving you any uh, number of possessions. You know, they get up two scores on you in the first half, and all of a sudden you start trying to, how many how many times are we going to get the ball? How many possessions do we have left? You start playing that game, and now you're trying to force it. You're trying to throw the football, make big plays. That's playing right into Tennessee's hands. In my mind, that's a big reason that they're 7-3 and three right now. They have gotten off to great starts in the first half and put the opposition behind the eight ball a little bit. On the flip side of that, the Bengals have finished strong. The Bengals have outscored the opponents by 26 points in the third quarter, 23 points in the fourth quarter. They're plus 49 in the second half. Tennessee is minus 31. So Tennessee, minus 15 in the third quarter, minus 16 in the fourth quarter. Why? Because they've had big leads, and they're, they're not a team that is explosive offensively. And then teams have made plays trying to come back in the football game and uh, you know have made these games close but have not been able to come back and, and finish – the game's well enough to beat the Tennessee Titans. So don't let Tennessee get off to that fast start. Bengals need to get off to a faster start, and then the Bengals have to finish like they finished for most of the season. That's going to be a a big factor uh, in this football game. Cannot let Tennessee get an early lead at home. That would be a tough thing to deal with. When you're playing against a football team that has a running game like the Tennessee Titans and they want to control the football and uh, control time of possession, play keep away from you, limit your offensive possessions. A big thing that you have to have during the course of the football game is some explosive plays. Last week is a great example. Joe Burrow hit six different receivers with a pass that resulted in a 21-yard gain or better. Six different players had a catch of 21 yards or more. I'll run through them here. T. Higgins had one for 33 yards. Samaj P. Ryan had a 29-yard uh, touchdown catch. Um, Irwin had a 32-yard reception. Mixon had a 24-yard reception before he got dinged up and had to leave the game with a concussion. Tyler Boyd had a 27-yard catch. Hayden Hurst had a 21-yard catch. You talk about distributing the ball to multiple players and getting explosives out of all those players. That's what you have to get done. And that's why the Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, here after the Cleveland Brown game, the 32-13 uh, blowout up in Cleveland on Monday night, it was a wake-up call. The Bengals have scored 79 points in the last two football games, 42 against Carolina, 37 against Pittsburgh. That's 79 points in about 900 yards of offense. I mean, they are on a roll. They are on a roll. So those explosives are there to get. And Joe Burrow has done a phenomenal job of reading things out, getting the ball to the right person. And he, Samaj P. Ryan caught three touchdown passes last week. Nobody, no receiver in team history has caught more than three touchdown passes in a single game. Samaj P. Ryan is the first running back to catch three touchdown passes in a single game. Joe Burrow took the profits. He just checked it down to Samaje on little swing passes, screen plays. Uh, 
you know what? Just keep putting those profits in the piggy bank and they'll, they'll add up. Joe Burrow is not going to force the issue. Joe Burrow is not going to try to make something happen that the defense has taken away. He's going to take what the defense gives him, and he's going to sustain drives. He's going to move the chains, and he's going to score points for the Cincinnati Bengals. That's a formula for success down there in Tennessee. Get after Derrick Henry and let Joe Burrow shine. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.